Wow, look at the bandwidth, 10 GHz bandwidth in a millimeter wave frequency. Welcome. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to design a unique millimeter wave antennas. The point is, doesn't matter what kind of software you are going to use, you can design the same structure in HFSS or ADS, but here I'm just using CSC Microwave Studio. I want that you see a different structure and different method in designing the antenna. It gives you a very good view in the designing process. We create a new template. In the section of RF, we choose antennas. The antenna has a kind of a structure of planner. And then we choose time domain because we want to study the antenna in the wide uh, range of frequency. And then gigahertz, that's okay. This is start from 30 gigahertz up to 45 gigahertz. And then monitor EH bar field over what frequency 35. Why 35 gigahertz? Because I know what frequency this antenna is gonna resonate. Alright, then in the modeling, we choose local WCS. It's gonna show a new coordination here. In the view, I'm just click on working plane. I just want to get rid of that mesh. And then in the simulation, first of all, we want to create the antenna substrate, which is the rectangular shape. In the modeling, we choose rectangular. And then double click, double click, double click. The substrate white is 2.45 millimeter. So I put like minus 2.45 divided by 2. 2.45 divided by 2 and then it has a thickness of 0 0.09 millimeter. The antenna length is equal to 3.5 millimeter and then from here loud from material library we go to the Rogers the antenna substrate is Rogers RO4450 Nope, this one. Rajas are of 4450B. So with a epsilon of 3.3. Alright. Then we click OK. So then we go to the back side. We want to create the antenna ground. I just press D and then select S by pressing on the keyboard and double click on this one I just select this line and then go to the brick section and then the antenna has a rectangular ground the white of the ground is the same as the white of the substrate and it goes until the W max of 1.6 millimeter so and then for the thickness of the ground is just a thickness of copper coating and uh, you can find it in the data sheet of the substrate actually the thickness that i'm going to using for this kind of substrate is a standard thickness for this substrate you can find all of them from the company so that's minus t i just named it minus t and then it's 0 0.017 all right the material of course is copper where is copper copper this one all right and then i press d the antenna is fed by a micro strip line so i'm gonna select this one and then it has a kind of rectangular shape micro strip line the line has a width of 0.18 millimeter, so minus 0.18 divided by 2, 0.5 divided by 2. The thickness of plus T because it's copper. 
and then W max of uh, 3.315 and it's also copper so that's okay and then I'm gonna choose the cylinder one double click double click double click and we choose the cylinder direction which is in the V direction because it's gonna place on the substrate outer radius is equal to 0 0.3 millimeter inner radius 0 and then the cylinder height is equal to 0 0.4 millimeter but consider this one for cylinder height we should add the substrate thickness to it so it is 0 0.09 it's a start from 0 0.09 and it goes up to 0 0.09 plus 0 0.4 and then the U center okay it is 0 0.5 and then in the direction of the micro strip feed line this direction it's gonna goes to 3.05 The material is we go to the Rogers. It is uh, Rogers, I think, uh, 58 AT. Let me find it 58 AT fit epsilon of 1.96. And then I'm gonna select the surface by pressing S, double click on it. I want to put a copper parasitic element on top of it so it's the copper I'm gonna go to the coordination the thickness is equal to the copper thickness which we consider as a T and the material is copper then I need four of this one so I just press the control and double click on this double click on this and I'm gonna select it right click on them and then transform I choose the copy and then I choose the transfer I just bring it here equal to one so again I'm gonna choose them and then transfer and if I copy this time I have four of them what's the distance 0 0.08 right now we are gonna define the waveguide that's gonna excite the antenna so I just select the micro strip feed line we are gonna go to the home macros solver ports calculate port extension coefficients in this section is gonna design a waveguide compared to the weight of the micro strip line and the substrate that you use and I close it And right now, the most interesting section is running the antenna. All right, it is running without any errors. Let me see the band white. Wow, look at the band white, 10 gigahertz band white in a millimeter wave frequency. So it's gonna potentially start from here up to there. So start around 31 gigahertz up to 41 gigahertz. And it has a resonance frequency around 35 gigahertz. And with more accuracy, it is, let me see, it is around 34.6 gigahertz. That's what I choose the radiation pattern at 35 gigahertz.
Look at the minimum return loss. Minus 31 dB. That's very good. And then in the far field, I'm going to show you how the antenna radiates. This is the antenna radiation pattern at 35 gigahertz. The antenna has a kind of radiation pattern look like a dipole antenna. So you can see it's a kind of it's cover all around the antenna. And if I show the structure, you can see the radiation goes like this. I'm going to show you. Imagine if this one this is the antenna, the radiation pattern goes like a tube around it. It looks like we have a dipole antenna in this direction, like this. If we look at the electric field, so you can see the wave is coming by this micro strip transmission line and it's gonna excite these four parasitic elements. So and this dielectric here is kind of act like a dielectric resonator. So in the reality, it depends on the technology that we have. They can fabricate it with different methods. For example, they can print this one as a PCB layer, and then they can print this one and that one, and they can use the glue that stick them together or same method that they use for the ceramic LTCC, they can just print this one layer by layer. Or in the high technology, if they have 3D printers, they can 3D print this one on top of the substrate. The things that you should know about this design is that I didn't copy any paper, so that's my design. The problem with copying the structure from the paper is that you cannot use it in your work, okay? You should reference the person that you use the work. So the work is not generally for you. But here I just want to give a gift to my viewers that uh, you can use them in your project. There's a good thing about this antenna is that I didn't optimize it, okay? You can optimize the antenna by changing its parameter. And I know the antenna performance has become better because when I optimize it, the performance has become better. But I designed here the kind of low performance antenna that you can improve it. So thanks for watching. Sometimes I have a gift for you. I hope I can see you in the future.